Hi, Anson Garcia here with Verizon, and today we're going to be looking at meetings, Spark meetings. So we're continuing down this road, learning about Spark, and thanks for being with me. Let's get started. So Spark meetings has two separate parts or two different tiers, and this is as of 3-26-2018. I say that because there's some things that are changing maybe this month, maybe possibly next month, and I'll try to supplement this video with, uh, with those updates. So basically there is the concept of these basic meetings right here. And basic meetings essentially today, you can think of that as a kind of a video-centric style of video conferencing. So when I say video-centric, I'm kind of meeting, you know, a big screen on the wall, in, let's say San Francisco and then a big screen on the wall and let's say uh, Houston and those things are dialing in to some conferencing bridge on, on the internet possibly or internally or something like that and those things are called MCUs right so you got conferencing units there's not a lot of features there there's usually some style of you know pan and, and things like that zoom from the the two uh, different endpoints there may even be nice, you know, nicer upscale units that have face recognition and face zooming and, and all that kind of stuff. But just think of basic meetings as the back end kind of being more video centric, video conferencing centric. These can host up to uh, 25 participants. Uh, I hear that they're scaling up soon. I heard numbers as high uh, from 100 to 200. So somewhere around that realm right there. Also, there is advanced meetings. So this is the second tier. This is a different license, obviously. And um, this kind of gives two different experiences. Basically, this is nothing more than WebEx. Okay, so advanced meetings provides you with a traditional WebEx experience. That is the portal where you can schedule meetings and join meetings and, and do all that kind of neat stuff in Meeting Center. And then if you remember a couple of years back, Cisco came out with CMR, Cisco Meeting Rooms, and he also came up with this concept of personal meeting room. Both of these had the traditional side of WebEx, and they also had what they call a URI. Um, and this URI was pretty much, was kind of like a SIP dialer, so any particular standard-based video conferencing unit could dial that URI and get into that WebEx video conference. That is the the two different, and, and when we do our demos, I'm going to show you the two different styles here. But just right now, just make sure you get in your head that this basic meetings is more the traditional style video centric, even though it's from your desktop. It's not a big screen on the wall or anything like that, but it's kind of the same experience semi. These are broad strokes right now. And then the advanced meetings tier is your traditional WebEx. Now that again does provide you with the WebEx portal, all those things that we've come to learn and love and all the features recording and raise your hand and all those things that we can do inside the traditional WebEx through the WebEx portal, the web app, you know, productivity tools and all those things like that. But it also, we can't forget CMR and PMR, and we'll see how those kind of play into the Spark Advanced meetings when we join meetings or schedule meetings and things like that. So the other thing here is we want to make sure and understand that over time, and one of the reasons that I've waited to do this video on meetings, one, there's a lot to it, and it's very difficult to extract what it's what what's in a basic 101 class and what goes into a, a more advanced class and then two i was waiting because these things are coming together and there were some things that were supposed to come out very soon and i was hoping to wait long enough to to uh, to blur these lines or cisco to blur the lines between webex advanced meetings or spark advanced meetings and spark basic meetings unfortunately i ran out of time and it's time to go ahead and release this video and again i will follow up um, hopefully in the next couple of months cisco releases this and i'll be able to come back and redo the video or just glue in you know something in the in the front of this video or the back of this video and then repost it so unifying experience 
when it comes to Spark users. All right, and we'll see that. I, I, I'm contemplating putting a couple of pictures inside this video to show you what I've seen already. Okay, let's put advanced meetings aside. Let's just talk about Spark basic meetings for now. Basic meetings can happen in any group space or a team space, and they provide a URL. That URL basically is a URL that cross launches a Spark client. Right, so when you see URL, just think Spark client for now. And it provides a URI. When you, when you see URI, just think traditional video conferencing unit, SIP dialing a URI, things like that. When, when you see URI, also think of maybe a uh, Polycom unit or a Zoom unit, a Zoom room unit or something like that, being able to dial, uh, as long as it's standards based, uh, video conferencing unit it can dial into this particular meeting okay so you can can happen inside these spaces so we have a one-to-one -one space that space includes a URL okay and I'm going to come back to that why you don't see URI there a group space includes a URL and a URI and a team space includes a URL and a URI Again, URL, think cross-launching Spark client and going into a meeting. URI, think a video conferencing unit dialing into this particular meeting. Now, why does the one-to-one -one space not include a URI? Well, I have discovered this on accident, and the only logical conclusion or answer I could come up with is a one-to-one -one space is not a meeting. It's a one-to-one -one call. So if you go into, and you'll see later, if we actually do a meeting, you push the same button to create a call or a meeting. It's kind of the same thing happening within a space. But in a URL, or excuse me, in a one-to-one -one space, you're only talking to one person. And that person is on Spark. And when you click to call them or to start a meeting, you're really not starting a meeting per se, like a video conferencing meeting. You're kind of just calling the other person. So hence, I believe that thus there is no URI. So you can't go give that URI to, let's say, a third person and say, here's a URI, join my meeting. And that third person having a Zoom room or, um, or something, uh, some other third party vendor video conferencing unit. So the types of meetings. What types of meetings are there? Well, there's ad hoc. You know, you basically push the, the green call button that's under the activity menu. And you'll start a meeting. You can start a meeting anytime in a space. So you go to the space. You click the activity men menu here. And then there's a call button, a green call button. You, you call that button. It's going to call everybody or call a meeting, whatever you want to call it. But it's basically going to extend a call out to a ring everybody's Spark client. And, and everybody can click, you know, answer or join, and then it will be brought into this meeting, okay, on their Spark clients. Now, there's a scheduled meeting with desktop integration. So I broke these two out, these, this desktop integration and then hybrid integration, because they're distinct and different, and they, it's important to understand which one is which and how they both work. So scheduled meeting with desktop integration, you can schedule a meeting by clicking the invite in the activities menu. Okay, so you go to this little activity menu and then you're going to click on meetings and under meetings there's going to be this invite menu. You click on the invite menu and what that's going to do is it's going to cross launch your calendar. Now both Outlook and, and G Suite Google Calendar work today. So it's going to cross launch your calendar and what it's going to do, it's going to pull over the information it's going to pull over the information like the space name that will go in the subject inside the Outlook. Let's say in our case, in our demo, it'll be bringing in the space name and putting it in the subject. It's going to bring in the participants. Okay, all the people that are part of that space are going to come in automatically into your Outlook and be included as participants in that Outlook meeting invite and it's going to bring the URL and URI so it's going to bring those things that you can click on 
to join you to the meeting. It's going to bring those into the Outlook meeting invite. So pretty cool. You click, you know, a couple of buttons. That's going to launch your calendar that you're using, and it's going to put the stuff in there that you need to then schedule that meeting. Of course, then you go on and schedule the meeting whenever you want, what times and things like that. And then when that meeting occurs inside the in Outlook calendar, and it reminds you to start, you'll have these things to click on to cross launch, you know, and join the meeting inside your Spark client. Now, what's different between the schedule with hybrid integration? Now, I'm going to talk more about this later. And again, we're going to see a demo on this and we'll bring it all together, but it is different. The think of the scar, the scheduled hybrid integration as let's call it, uh, let's call it back end integration. Okay. Back end meaning it's not on your desktop. It's entities talking in the background. In this case, it would be, you know, some server talking to your exchange environment and that server also talking to the Spark environment and, and gluing those two together. Okay, so this scheduled hybrid, we'll call that back-end integration. And then the, ske the, the scheduled with desktop integration, I named it that by, on purpose because the desktop integration is the key word. It's integrated on my desktop. Why is it integrated on my desktop? Because when I click, as I said before, when I click the meetings, the invite in the meetings under the activity menu, it cross launches what? It cross launches my calendar. So it's something that's on my desktop and I'm clicking. There's some APIs that are exposed there. And then we're pulling in some stuff from Spark and then placing it inside Outlook or your Google Calendar. Okay, so that's desktop integration. That's different. That should tell you right away that this kind of stuff here, this one right here, works on my desktop, but does not work on anything else. Okay, and that's why back end integration um, is an option. And this is specifically for Spark Hybrid or Spark Hybrid Calendaring. Back end integration gives me the ability to not rely on what's on my desktop or on my mobile device or my tablet because it's going to be integrated in the background. We'll see more about that later. So meetings in Spark Advanced are a little bit different and the, the basic thing you need to remember here or get in your head before we start this is the traditional WebEx Meeting Center product. Spark Advanced is the traditional WebEx Meeting Center product. That's all it is. There's some integration that we'll look at here in a minute, but it is nonetheless the WebEx Meeting Center uh, product. If you're not familiar with WebEx Meeting Center, there's tons of other videos on YouTube that you can watch that will give you or clue you into what that is. Why would you use the traditional WebEx meeting product and glue it into Spark. Why would it be another tier? And the reason is if you um, wanted the rich set of features that are available in, in WebEx. So WebEx is just, you know, it's decades old, uh, at least 10, 12 years old, and it's very mature in its feature rich capabilities for web collaboration, screen sharing, uh, raising hands, muting people, recording, whiteboards. There's all kind of gadgets and gizmos inside WebEx that make it a very rich environment and a very um, easy environment to conduct online meetings. The other reason is maybe you want to include outside participants that don't use Spark and they only have PSD and audio. So that's a reason because with basic meetings, basic meetings in Spark, you have to have Spark. That's it. There's no other, well, you can't have a traditional video conferencing unit that can dial URIs, remember, but um, you have to have Spark if you're working on your desktop. That's the only way in. Now with meetings advanced, you kind of bring in that WebEx aspect and in WebEx, you need a web browser. That's all you need. Or a telephone. Remember, we have PSDN 
audio inside WebEx. Hopefully you're using cloud connected audio from Verizon, but that's a different story. So what else we got here? You may need the ability to have more than 25 people. So today with basic meetings, you can only have up to 25 people in a meeting. Now I hear that's going up. As I said before, 100, I've even heard 200, something like that, and that should be coming. From what I understand, what in the, is, is in the back end of even Spark Basic meetings is WebEx underneath the hood. But And so that's where that 200 number comes. That, that's been a, a, a number that's been out there in WebEx forever. But I digress there. So how would you do this? So we got rid of the why, right? We know why we would want advanced meetings. Now, how would I do this? What features are available? It's a different product. It's a different experience. But remember, I talked about CMR and PMR. So how do we do this stuff? Outside of Spark, you would basically use the traditional way that you would use WebEx today. You would probably use the WebEx portal. You could use WebEx productivity tools. And I won't go through too much of WebEx productivity tools. I don't know if I'm going to do a demo on that or not. Plenty of YouTube videos on that if you want to go check that out. I even think I have some on my channel. This is the one we're kind of we're, we're wanting to take a, a dive into right here because this is the one they kind of pulled in the spark. So this personal meeting room URL, they kind of glued it in or gave you the capability to to glue that personal meeting room URL into Spark and we'll see that during the demos. I got basically outside of Spark out of the way. Inside of Spark you can use your Spark by adding the personal meeting room. I just talked about that. I kind of got ahead of myself there a second. You can then click your PMR button inside of Spark client and add it to the message portion of the space so people can click and go to your into your PMR. So that's a bunch of mumbo jumbo. This is going to make way more sense when I actually show you, but I've I've wanted to make the slide version first and then go into the demo. So let me try and give you some word pictures here. You can integrate inside your Spark client. Let's say we have an application to our Spark client. Inside our Spark client, we can glue, we can make a little button and that button would would have our PMR URL. Now remember what, what a PMR URL is, your personal meeting room URL, is it gives you ability to click on it, usually launches WebEx. Okay, but if you have a Spark client, what it does is launch you or kind of dials a URI inside Spark and it dials your URI into the, the WebEx meeting. Okay, let me say that again. Inside Spark, we can include a button that has your PMR URL. It looks and appears to be your URL when you click on it. But when you click on it, it kind of translates itself and it dials the URI side. And then that URI side, if, you, if you're familiar with WebEx at all, if you ever dialed into your personal meeting room as opposed to launching WebEx, the WebEx web app, you know, going in that way, you have to, you have to use a, a host pin. That's actually brought into that host, say that HP, that host pin is also integrated into Spark client, so it kind of happens automatically. So in other words, what I'm saying, inside your Spark client, I can click on this guy right here, and it's going to dial me into my WebEx PMR, and it's going to give it my host pin as well, so I'm brought in as the host. Now, are my traditional WebEx tools available to me? Not today. I can't hit record. I can't do anything like that. It would very. It would be akin to dialing a, my PMR URI on a video, you know, uh, conferencing unit on the wall. Okay. Hopefully that makes some sense, and hopefully we can glue it together in in the demos. Okay. Let me see this last point here. You can click on it as well, and it will bring you in a PR and bring in. Okay. Yep. I, I covered that. Okay, let's talk about hybrid calendaring. 
what type of additional capabilities does that bring in to the user experience when we choose to use hybrid calendaring? Well, one of the things it does is allow you to put at WebEx in your location field in the calendar invite. So if we're looking at our calendar invite here in Outlook, let's say there's a location field, and in that location field we can put at WebEx. Okay, and then what that does when we send off our invite to whoever we add participants, you know, to the invite, and we do all the stuff that we usually do with an invite, choose a time and things like that. What that does is brings in your PMR automatically. So remember I was talking about the um, how the PMR works in WebEx and I talked uh, discussed a little bit about this in the Spark meeting. This is kind of going the other way around. For the, the, the first way I explained was you're pushing a button inside Spark. This way I'm not even in Spark, I'm just creating a calendar invite in Outlook and I put at WebEx in my location and that's going to automatically pull in my PMR in the background. So it takes a few seconds because these entities are talking to each other. The Exchange environment is talking to the Spark environment and really in our case the exchange environment is talking to the webex slash spark environment and pull in your pmr in the background this is that back-end integration again when everybody looks at my invite that i created the location at webex they're going to see in the body of the invite a join meeting for my webex meeting i'll see that as well i never put it in there i just put at webex that's all i did now think about that a second. The benefit of this is, remember we have that capability in productivity tools, if you're familiar with productivity tools. But there is no productivity tools for my iPad, let's say, or my iPhone or my Android. So this really extends the capability to add your personal meeting room, your WebEx personal meeting room, when you're using other modalities, other devices, other... Um, platforms that do not have things like productivity tools okay so that's the benefit there now at spark is very very similar in the way it works the the only thing there is it's going to add your spark url and your spark uri okay in addition to that it's going to create a group space inside spark now that seems odd but just take, for example, if you were creating an invite and during creating this invite, you were adding folks to the invite and you said, you know, I want to, I'm going to obviously have a spark. I want to have a spark meeting on this. I'm going to use my meeting system and the meeting system just so happens to be spark. And I'd really like to post maybe uh, the presentation or some files for people to comment on before the meeting. And obviously, we're going to be talking about this meeting during the meeting, let's say, and then after the meeting. Well, it'd be great to have a Spark space created just as part of your invite. So you're working inside, let's say your iPad, you're working in Outlook or, or your mail client, whatever, and that's connected to Exchange, uh, or your work Exchange, or it could be Office 365 online, it doesn't matter. And you put out Spark and you add people that's going to, on the back end, then add a Spark space in your Spark client and add all the people that you added to that invite, that Outlook invite. It's going to add them to that space as well. Okay, hopefully that makes a little sense. Again, when we look at this in the demo, it's going to make sense. Don't worry about it. And then we have this other thing, one button to push. Um, I'm going to make a video on all the endpoints and going to add in, include stuff like this, but I thought it was important to uh, kind of highlight this because this is one of the selling points, one of the cool things inside Cisco Spark where you can have what in, one button to push on, on Spark Room Kits and SXs and things like that. Now, is it an earth-shattering feature? No. This feature has been out there in in other platforms as, as well as far as Blue Jeans and Zoom and 
and things like that. It's been in the Cisco world as well. The difference here is it's been very a very difficult, it's been a heavy lift to get this thing working. You've had a lot of on-prem equipment and things like that. And I can tell you that the configuration of this particular system on how to add um, a room system into the fold so it actually displays one button to push. I did it within two minutes. Things of the past and the expertise needed in the past to make all this magic happen has been severely decreased. And uh, again, one of the highlights I think is very uh, strong on the Cisco meetings is this one button to push on the spark room kits and spark boards and, and all this other stuff. So we'll take a look at that. I'll add a, a, a demo of this in this video as well. So uh, what does that look like? Well, it looks like basically if you are in your Outlook client um, and you, let's say you're doing at Spark, or at WebEx, whatever in the location, there's this uh, there's this thing, if you're not familiar with it, there's, there's this thing called rooms. And you can, if you've ever looked at your invite closely, you'll see that you have a little button that says rooms. And folks usually don't use it. Um, unless you're in a, a place where there's conferencing rooms and things like that. This is where it's typically been used, or if you have a high integration of uh, teleconferencing equipment, uh, big rooms with big screens and things like that. Well, basically what you do is you schedule a meeting and you add a room, and it just so happens, let's call it room, I don't know, let's call it room one. And in room one, in the back end, in exchange, is a room one has an email address and let's just call it you know one.com and then inside the spark cloud out here you go add let's say here's the room with the video here's room one with a big screen and the video camera right up there and when you register that to spark you tell it hey you know it's in room one and uh, the exchange mailbox for that is room1.com. Okay. As simple as that. Now, of course, there's some things in the exchange you got to do. You got to create this room and things like that. And there's a special uh, way to create an exchange room uh, inbox or calendar. But it's nothing arduous. Uh, neither, you know, exchange server uh, on-prem or exchange online. It's a very simple, very um, uh, well-known uh, feature on how to set this up. When you add the room to your Outlook invite, it's going to add this. The magic is going to happen between Exchange and the Spark Cloud. And when that meeting is ready to be started, remember inside the invite, what's the invite have when you uh, do at Spark or at WebEx, it has the URL, URIs in there. So what's going to happen is through some you know, magic from your exchange, it's going to suck that up to Spark Cloud and it's going to put that, you know, on the screen or on the kiosk to that screen and the big green button. And let's draw a big green button over here. And, you know, there's going to be a big green button on the screen when that meeting's ready to start, or it may be even, maybe you have a kiosk that's in the room, and that kiosk is it's going to have a big green button on it, and you're going to push that green button, and it's doing nothing more than dialing the URI of that meeting. So hopefully that makes some sense. If it doesn't, definitely the video will make some sense. So enough with the death by PowerPoint slides. Let's really see what's going on. Let's take a look at these things. And, and I really think that this is where things are going to come together. You can definitely review all the slides and all my chit chat on stuff, but uh, this is where I like to play. And I think this is where things and concepts will start coming together and connecting the dots for you learning about uh, the meetings inside Spark. So we're tackling basic meetings first, and this is a list of what we're going to do here. Um, so let's take a look at scheduling a basic meeting. So how do we schedule a, meeting, a, a basic meeting in a group space, a team space, or 
directly in Outlook. Let's see. So in a, a basic meeting in a team space, All right, let's see what I had first. Group space and then team space. Okay, we can do that. So we're dealing with the same stuff. And if you haven't watched my other videos, let me just acquaint you with what I got here. I got a couple of PCs here. These are two virtual machines. When I click on Jack over here, that's going to Jack's Windows 10 machine. So don't get confused with my own Windows machine down here and this Windows machine right here. Okay, so this is a Windows machine. You can see I can kind of, let's go put that away right here. <clears throat> Here's a Windows machine. That's Jack's and Liz's is right here. All right. Okay, so let's go back to Jack. Well, let's pull everything up full screen here. Let's go to our Spark client. I'm going to leave that just like that so we can, can kind of see that PC is blue. And that's Jack's PC. So in a group space, remember, remember we created this group space way back when? This chat space right here, this group, uh, group space with several people, several folks in it. And if I go over here, I can see there's several people in it. Jack, Anson Garcia at OneVerizon.com, and Elizabeth Swan is there too. Okay, so how would we schedule a meeting? Let's say we had a group here, a group chat space, and I wanted to schedule a meeting. Uh, for tomorrow for tomorrow let's say or for later today uh, all we would need to do is click on our activity menu we click on meetings right here and then we create we click on this create meeting now what's going to happen is it's going to cross launch what, what's happening is it's going to cross launch outlook automatically start a meeting invite and it's going to pull in my folks that are here it's going to add them and it's going to add these meeting links. Okay, remember this is the URL. When I say URL, that means cross launch Spark client. Here's the URI. When I say URI, that means somebody with a video conferencing unit can dial, you know, this particular URI. So let's see what happens. Let's create a meeting. <clears throat> You'll see what happens is here's my Outlook. You can see everybody was added right there. The subject pulled over from the group space name, group chat space, you see that? Group chat space. The at Spark was automatically added. Okay, and then my Spark information, my Spark meeting information, these are two like, clickables, but if I hover over them, you can see, let's look at the number there. You see the last uh, four numbers, FB68, you see that? So let's go look over here. And you can see FB68 right there. So it pulled that link in. Let's go look at the other one. 88537776480 at meet.ciscospark.com. Okay, we can see that got pulled in right from here. All right, so nothing more. This is desktop integration. All right, this is what's called front end integration, or what I call front end integration, not back end integration. Okay, and that's it. I can send that off. I'm good to go. Let's see. Let's do that for 7.30. Okay. And there we have it. Okay, so how would we do that in a team space? Okay, that was a group space. How do we do that in the team space? So I'm going to go back over here. I'm just going to cancel this meeting. Okay, we'll let that cancel. And I'm going to go, remember, in Teams, I can go to a, a, a space under Teams. And let's pick, uh, oh, let's, let's pick this ship propeller team. Let's see who's in here. Okay, looks like the same people. Good. So we have those folks inside this team, inside this team space, excuse me. And I do the same exact thing. So inside this team space, I'm going to go to my activity menu. I'm going to push menu. And the same thing is going to happen. Create meeting invite. That's going to bring up, add all my folks here. There's my subject. Now, it doesn't put the team that the, this is part of. It just puts the space name. I kind of wish it would put the team, you know, and then dash, you know, space name or something like that. And then there's the other... Uh, things too. And now you can see this is a different space, so the links are different. Let's see the last four A62D there. We can see over here A62D, and there's my 884, 89, 76, 19, 20, 
you can see 1920 right there. Okay, what's next here? We had an indirectly in Outlook. So I won't do, I won't send this off. Okay, I won't send that off because it's going to look just like the other one. Regular meeting invite, and we're going to have all our Spark stuff ready to click on and start Spark. Not going to save any changes there. <clears throat> oh, you know, um, if I would have, if I would have done that, let's go ahead and do that. I've changed my mind. Mid demo. Because I want to use, I want you to see one thing here. Let's send that off. Eight o'clock. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, you'll see what happens here. And we're going to wait just a second. And you see that that particular um, banner, I call it a badge, a banner, whatever, was actually created inside the space. So this is in the messaging content. See, this is where we're message, messaging each other inside this space. So it created that and, and, and put it in the space. Okay, we're going to look at some other things that it does, does too here in just a second. Let's do this one directly in Outlook. So how can we schedule a meeting directly in Outlook? Well, that's easy enough. Let's go directly in Outlook over here. We see that we have a meeting there. Let's do a meeting at 7.30. Okay, and let's add, remember I'm Jack right now, I'm going to add Elizabeth. Oh, excuse me. Subject, I'm going to say test. Test meeting. Location, we're going to do at Spark. Okay, now remember, we're doing this backwards. I'm actually starting inside my calendar, not inside Spark. It has nothing to do with Spark. In fact, I could close Spark right now if I wanted to. And I could be doing this on an iPhone. Right? On an iPhone, you can put at Spark with no worries. So we're testing the back-end integration is what we're doing. And then I'm going to say, you know, we need a meeting. In fact, just to prove to you, I want to go ahead. I'm just going to, let's log out here. Okay, let's sign out. I just want to prove to you that this has nothing to do with Spark, nothing to do with my Outlook client talking to my Spark client. So there we are. We're logged out. And then I'm going to send that away. Okay. Oh, I got to I got to add some folks. Got to add some folks first. So I apologize for that. And let's add attendees. Let's going to add East One. Or Elizabeth. There she is. Boom. Go look at my appointment. Does that look okay? Yep, to her. Test meeting. I could add some other folks if I wanted to. Test meeting at Spark. Let's add somebody else. Let's add Anson or see a Gmail. Same folks that were added before. And let's set, send that away. That's it. Okay, now let's go look at this. Uh, this one, This one right here. Okay, you see there's nothing here. So right now, this is just a few seconds later. Uh, I haven't stopped the clock or stopped the video or anything. But we have nothing inside there. Okay, let's close that up. And for the sake of time, I'm going to pause this video. Okay, that was literally about six seconds I waited. And it's already in here, I know, because I just checked it. But let's go back to that meeting. And you can see that my URL and URI are there to join the meeting. So what happened was nothing on my desktop. It's, this is all done in the cloud. This is all done with Cisco hybrid services and the connection between the two. The connection between on-prem, uh, in my case, on-prem uh, exchange and the cloud uh, Cisco Spark Cloud. Okay, and this is called hybrid calendaring. Okay, let's create one more meeting. Well, let's go back and let's log back into
let's see what happened if anything over here alrighty now what we can see is now there's this join buttons there it's getting in the way but what we can see here is this space was created see remember these spaces have a little badge here and this space is test meeting okay it took my it took my subject from my invite created a space and let's go see who's in this space who did it add to this space well what do you know it added all the folks that were in participants that I added for my in, in my invite so again nothing to do with spark here this had to do with exchange and my calendar speaking directly to the spark cloud the Cisco spark cloud and in creating this space this group space is what it is it's not a team space it's a group space creating this group space and then adding the folks to that space that needed to be that were in the invite and then also adding a meeting URL and URI and if I go look over here at my meetings button these these are the things that were created this URI and URL okay and it also put this little flag I don't know what we call this call it a badge before but a flag inside the message body here okay if I click on that I can go over to my calendar which I'm going to show you more in a little bit but you kind of get the picture um, hopefully that's clear on what's happened so now just back to this I want to make sure that we recap here on this particular demos we schedule a meeting in a group space we schedule a meeting in a team space and then we directly created a meeting invite inside Outlook added the at spark and the result of that I'm gonna put equals it created a spark group space and once we have spark group space we have URLs and URIs for that group space to have a meeting in and then it also I'm gonna put also put my big green button to start my meeting right and we saw that it basically it knows the time right it's time to join because it's 7:30. we can see it's 7:37 over here so as soon as I did that in Outlook and all this magic happened in the background everybody if I go over to Liz she's gonna have that toast that popped up because her spark isn't up but that toast popped up hey it's you know it's ready you need to join this meeting and then everyone can join very easily. They can join from here. They can join from the pop-up toe. So we'll join right there. We'll join via video right here. And then we we'll go over to Jack. And then he can join. And then um, that's it. They're in a meeting. And Anson will get the same thing. Anson's over here. And there is his. He's using the web app. Right? If you look here, this is Firefox. So he doesn't have Spark. But he's got the web app. And then he can join right from there okay and these are virtual machines so <laughs> there's no uh, speakers or microphone or anything like that on here so it's gonna have trouble doing that but you can get the picture this is where video would come out everyone would you know webcam or uh, or your iPad camera or whatever and everyone would be talking to each other and you'd see each other right here have a little film strip down down the bottom there okay so we can end that meeting right there. Now you see it's going to still stay because the meeting's all the way till 8 o'clock. So anybody can join at any particular time. They can come in and out of that meeting. All right. So um, I want to show you more stuff here, but I won't because we're just looking at scheduling. Okay. So one more thing on this one. This video is getting a little long, but a lot to do here. Okay, let's continue. And how do we edit a basic meeting? So
Let's look at uh, the different ways we can edit a basic meeting. In the Spark space by clicking Meeting Banner, okay, we can do that. We can do it in the Spark calendar itself. Essentially, the Spark space, when we click the Meeting Banner in Spark space, Spark space it's going to take us to the Spark calendar. And that's where we can edit, and that ultimately takes us to Outlook. So even though we can do it in these three places, the ultimate place we edit a meeting, where are your meetings? Your meetings are in your calendar, in Outlook. So let's take a look at that. So let's create a meeting. We're in the uh, ship repair team in ship propeller space right here. I'm going to go ahead and create a meeting. So just so we do the whole process through and through. And I'm going to send that off. We um, get that up here and let's uh, dismiss that. We get the join button right away. Okay. And let's say I need to maybe cancel that meeting and move that meeting out a little bit. I can, in the space, remember we have this little banner that was created. See, 8 o'clock. So that banner was created inside the space. Now I can click on that banner and see where it takes me is to my calendar tab. And, in, and it takes me to that particular meeting right away. Okay, now I can go ahead and click edit right here. And what that's going to take me to is... You got it. Outlook, because that is where the meeting is scheduled at. And then I can change the meeting right here. So let's say we'll change it to 830. We want to give ourselves a little bit more time. We'll send an update. And then all this stuff will update eventually. It takes a, a, few, a few seconds to do this. We'll go back to our space here. We'll take a look. Okay, and I didn't stop the video, so that's how long it took. You see my banner here changed to 830. My join went away, and um, I can do that again. We can go over here, and we can see that it's been changed to 830. So, you know, 5 seconds, 10 seconds, something like that. That's what it took. So, that's it. And, of course, you can not be in Spark at all, and let's say you were on your iPad or iPhone or something like that, and of course you can do the same thing just right from here, right? Um, you can change the time here, because that's basically what we did. We just got here from Spark. Okay, how do we join a basic meeting? So there's a few ways to join. We can click the green button in, the, uh, in Spark, right? It's going to come up on top. We can click our toast, too, so I need to add that, you know, the toast that pops up in the lower right-hand side. So toast pop-up in our Outlook meeting invite. Remember the URL and the URI there? And in the Spark calendar as well, and in the Spark space. So let's take a look at these. I recreated the meeting, and I moved the meeting back to 8 o'clock. Okay, so that's right now. And let's go take a look at the first one in Spark. So if we're here, what this is going to show as soon as it updates. Okay, and we can see that the first way we can join is just clicking the Join button here. So we can certainly just click the Join button right there, and that'll pull us into the meeting. We can click the toast that pops up from our task bar down here. And we can certainly go into the Outlook invite. So let's go over. Since Jack created the meeting, let's go over to Liz. She was included in the meeting. And we'll go ahead and bring her up here. We can see she has the toast as well. She's got the join button there. She can um, be in her Outlook. Uh, she didn't accept that. That's why that's grayed out. But let me uh, double click that. Okay. And she can click right here. That'll cross launch the Spark um, application. And uh, the URI, interesting enough, let's, let's, do, let's do this. Okay. We know that will cross launch the Spark application. You see it's a URL. But what happens is, bingo. You see? So it's a URL that cross launches the Spark application, and I can I can join the Spark application. This is the Spark application right here. 
Okay, I'm going to close that. I'm not going to join that way. But right here, this URI, I'm going to click that and you're going to see something interesting happen. Will that launch the Spark application? It will not. Um, what's registered on this PC to dial SIP URIs is Jabber. So it just so happens I have Jabber on this same PC. It wasn't started. It just started up aut automatically uh, because it's registered as the reg registered application to dial SIP URIs on this uh, Windows 10 PC is Jabber. And if I say, uh, if I say yes here, that's going to look familiar to you guys that are familiar with Jabber. It's going to dial into the meeting right there. So this would be akin to, you know, having a a video conference unit and dial URI. Okay, I would see my videos there. You see, I'm I'm in the meeting and all that, but we don't want to go in that way. But uh, typically, people will not have. Well, who knows? But once you're all Spark, you're probably not going to have Jabber. You know, there are some instances maybe people will have Jabber and Spark, and and they may want to click that. There may be a training issue that uh, make sure you click on the the uh, Spark if you're going to if you have Spark on your on your desktop. Let's go ahead and close this. That kind of auto launched there. Okay, and then we can also go to the Spark space. And where did our Spark go? There it is. There. We're going to know we can go to the Spark space itself. Well, it brings the Spark space up here. So we can go to the Spark space um, here and click there. That's going to take us over to the calendar. And then obviously right from here, you can see there it is. And then we can click join there. All right. We'll join there. In fact, we'll go ahead and join Jack. And one thing I want to show you before we get done with this go ahead and join so Jack's joined and Liz is joined and you can see uh, something kind of neat here inside the meeting is I've joined and I know who's there Eliz Elizabeth and Jack and then not in the meeting is Anson Garcia okay there's one more I forgot to add in and it is the ad hoc basic meetings and all you do here is to click the activity button to start a basic meeting that's it so there's nothing more it's the easiest one to do you go to any space, either a group space or a, a team space. You click on the activity menu and you click call. And that's it. Start your video. What that does is going to call everybody else. Okay, so if we go look at Liz, is part of this group. So if we go over here Liz, she's getting a call. So she can join here or join down there. So that's how ad hoc works. Okay, now we're going to look at advanced meetings, and this is where it's going to start coming together as far as being evident what the difference is between basic meetings and advanced meetings. Now, let's take a look at each of these, and I want you to see in my, my slides here, my basic meeting demo, scheduled basic meeting in in Spark group space, in team space, and directly in Outlook, and on and on. And you can see that I just copied and pasted, pasted, or I duplicated this slide. Okay, I added a little bit while we were doing the other training, but it's essentially the, sl the same. But we can't do all these things in advanced meetings, so we're going to need to minus a couple of things here. And let's take a look at what the difference is between basic meetings and advanced meetings okay so let me just talk a little bit about this first can we schedule an advanced meeting inside a group space <clears throat> think about that a second can we schedule an advanced meeting, a WebEx meeting, inside a group space. If you remember, and I'm going to bring up something here. If you remember, the way we scheduled something in a group space, this, this was a group space right here. This was our group chat space. <clears throat> the only way to schedule a meeting in here was to push this button and schedule a meeting. And this is a Spark basic meeting. 
and that's the Spark Basic Meaning URI. So I don't have it. I don't have any option for advanced meeting. Okay. Hopefully this is becoming a little clear. So the answer then on this guy, I got to take this away from here. We can't do that. There's no way to do that inside Spark. So we take that one away. <clears throat> How about in a team space? Well, very similar. Okay, let's go to a team space. This is the team ship repair and the ship propeller space. Can I create a, a, an advanced meeting in here? No, I cannot. That's a, if I go here, go to meetings, this is a spark meeting. This is a basic meeting, the video centric style. And that's my URI. This is basic meetings. Okay, so what do I do? If I have, remember, one of the stipulations on basic meetings is they can only hold, for now anyway, 25 folks. 25 people. What if I have more than 25 people in this space? What do I do? In fact, when you have more than 25 people, and I've tested this, in a space, you can't create a meeting. This thing, When you click this thing, it says, nope, you can't do that. There's more than 25 people here. So it tells you. So what are you to do? You have to do an advanced meeting. What are my options? Okay, so we got to take this one out. We can't do that. I already kind of let the cat out of the bag on the other one. I was supposed to only show you basic meetings in this demo over here, but I did a, a WebEx one. That was an advanced meeting. So I should have put, you know, this is an advanced meeting. So I did the wrong thing there. So I really should have not done that back over here, but that's okay. We're going to do it again over here just so you get the concept, drive home that concept. So can we schedule an advanced meeting in Outlook with the at WebEx? You bet we can. We can certainly do that. How do we do that? Let's go over here. This is a redundant demo, but I'm going to do it anyway. And we don't start in Spark. We start in WebEx. And we choose a time. Say, uh, <clears throat> choose 10 o'clock here. And then we're going to put subject uh, test advanced meeting location. Remember our location. We're using Spark Hybrid here. So our location is going to be at WebEx. Um, we're going to add some folks here. And let's add Elizabeth. And uh, we'll go ahead and add HansonGarcia at gmail.com too. <clears throat> we say OK. Go here at WebEx, it all looks good. And uh, we can put some text in here, whatever we need. And we send that away. While that's updating, let me bring up a whiteboard and I'm going to show you what's going on. Now, this is a little, I'm going to geek out a little bit. I know this is a one on one class, but it's important to know what's going on. You have the Spark Cloud out here, we'll call it Spark Cloud, and you have your Exchange out here. Now this could be online or server, on-prem, it doesn't matter. We have a connector, what we call a connector in the middle. This connector hooks up to the Spark Cloud and we're going to call this Spark Cloud slash WebEx. And we have a connector to Exchange. Okay, now what happened is somebody in Exchange over here, and it was Jack Sparrow, create a meeting And in that meeting, he put at WebEx. Okay, since the connector can look inside calendars, it spots this guy. It says, oh, there's an at WebEx there, Jack Sparrow. 
and Jack Sparrow at bzbdemo.com in my scenario here. <clears throat> this connector, and I'm, I'm simplifying this, this connector is going to go over here and look in WebEx. Is there a Jack Sparrow at bzbdemo.com or excuse me, it was .net. Um, user and there happens to be one okay what is his PMR his personal meeting room URL and URI I'm gonna grab that URL and URI <clears throat> and it's gonna ship that over let's use a different color here uh, how about we say we use purple sounds good to me I'm going to ship that back to the connector and it's going to go back into exchange and it's going to drop in and update his calendar invite with the URL and URI. Okay, so that's what's happening in the background. Let's go back to our scenario. There's our meeting right there that we just did remember at webex and um let's go ahead and snooze that let's go ahead and open that up and see what's in there nothing yet it's been about a minute or so <clears throat> let's go take a look at liz she got it over here we'll go ahead and just accept over here clean this up here go back oh oh did you see that yeah look like it already updated so let's go back over here and there it is okay just takes a little time takes a, a minute or two but there's what I just drew a second ago just happened so there's the URL and there's the URI okay and you can see this is a typical if you're familiar with WebEx this is a WebEx domain here, site. That's the, the, the personal meeting room. Usually it has their person's name and then the WebEx site there. And then we have some numbers. Remember, one of the things we wanted to do, if we had a, a, a one of the a meeting with audio, we needed to do a WebEx uh, or a advanced meeting. So there you have it. That's how that works. Now, that's okay. Um but we didn't do it inside of space right so there's nothing in these spaces that knows that this meeting is going to happen so you don't really don't get a space um, you basically have nothing other than your calendar and i think i'm yeah there's the join so let me make sure i don't miss anything edit in advance meeting okay let's go ahead and edit first uh, in the spark space can i edit in the spark space by click clicking the banner I cannot because it's not um, inside my spark space at all uh, can I uh, edit it directly in Outlook you bet I can sure I can that's where I created it so I can manipulate it here anytime I want I can uh, update the time um, uh, move it um, move the date make it recurring whatever I want to do and this is my PMR in here okay so what's next can we join from the spark green button hmm interesting we weren't in spark at all we created it outside of spark this has everything to do with advanced meetings which is webex but can we do that and you bet we can if i go to my calendar so from my messaging to my calendar here Look at that. It shows up in my calendar. There it is right there. And I can click on it and I can join early right there. Okay. And there's my join info right there too. I can copy that. So there's two things to note here that are important. And again, I'm geeking out here. This is a little higher level than just 101. But uh, I can join here very easily. What that's going to do is it's going to dial 
into my WebEx. You guys familiar with WebEx are going to know this is kind of a PMR. You're going to dial in. You're dialing into the kind of the video aspect of it, the video-centric side. Remember I told you WebEx has a video-centric side and then the web app kind of side where you have all the tools. You know, I can't. What if I wanted to record or something like that? I have. I, I, I got over the hurdle of 25 needing 25 ports or 25 people to join this, but maybe I need some additional tools. Like I want to record this meeting. I can't go in this way because it doesn't give me that yet. Anyway, what are the ways can I go in? Well, I can certainly copy this, right, and go in um, this way. Just paste that right there. Oh, I didn't want to search. I wanted to paste that. And I copied that wrong. Let me copy that. Oh, you know what? I think it's copying the whole thing, which I hadn't, I haven't seen before. Yeah, interesting. Um, I don't remember it doing that, but I can copy this. And again, I'm kind of geeking out here. And I can get that URL pasted into a web browser. Paste and go. And what's going to happen is I'm going to go in through WebEx. Okay, so I can start, boom, start right here. That's one way. A little difficult because i got to copy that guy. When I chose to copy this, it copied everything. And I just couldn't paste it in, so I had to kind of highlight that and pull it in. What about this right here? I got a toast now. It's because it's almost time to join. So I got this right here. So I can go this way. If I go this way or this way, remember, I get my start button over here. So that's good. That's what's great about the Spark. I can start my meetings right from here. But if I start from here, just like before, I'm going to start on the video side. Okay, if I start from here, it's going to take me the same place. I'm going to start on the video side. Again, my scenario right now that I'm trying to teach you is that's easy enough. Very easy to join these meetings if it's WebEx. Very easy. Now, what I want to do is maybe have some tools available to me to like record and things like that. And that, if I wanted that, then I would start from this side. And that's going to be your traditional WebEx side. I start the meeting here. And I'm outside of Spark, right? This is just a web browser here. And then we, we our WebEx little plugin kind of um, started up here. And I can call me or I can do whatever now. But I have nothing to do with Spark. And let's go Liz. And Liz, let's say, is going to join this way. Okay, she's going to uh, push the green button here or here. Let's push this green button. It's going to take us the same place. We're going to join via video. And then she's going to go right in that meeting. Okay. We see the participants, we see Jack Sparrow, and if I go over to Jack and I have my traditional tool so I can start my recording right now if I want to, I can also um, uh, share my screen. Of course, you can share your screen in the other um, uh, when you go into Sparkway too. But the other tools available to me, lock room, record, you know, um, all these little widgets here, mute all, you know, things like that. This gives me a much more robust way to hold my meeting if I wanted to do polling, um, you know, and things like that. So anyway, I just wanted to show you what the difference is, all these features that we bring in, these great features, by the way, that we can bring in with WebEx um, or Spark Advanced Meetings, which is WebEx. Let's go ahead and end that meeting. <clears throat> and uh, it wants me to start again because it knows I left. And then let's go back to Spark. And uh, we'll go there. And now we can see over here Liz. That meeting has ended as well over for her. So that disconnected her. And then we'll go back to our PowerPoint presentation. So we definitely got the green button in Spark. No worries there. What about the, in the Outlook invite? Can I join the advanced meeting? You bet I can. Inside Outlook, if I bring Outlook up, I can go to my meeting 
and I can click the URL and I can start my meeting that way. Okay? So that's another easy way, another feature that we can use to join our meeting. And that's very easy to learn. If I want to use the full capabilities of WebEx, I just go to my, uh, if I'm using advanced meetings anyway, I can go to my um, calendar and click there. Let's go ahead and end that meeting again. What's next? Uh, in the Spark calendar, well, I just showed you that. Absolutely, you can do that. We'll go take another look at it here. Boom, there it is. Highlight it. Join. Okay. What else? Uh, in the Spark Space. Well, no. Because in the Spark Space, these aren't associated with the Spark Space. So let's take that one out as well. We're going to just leave what we can do um, in here. Okay, let's review how we would do an ad hoc advanced meeting. So an ad hoc WebEx using my personal meeting room or personal meeting room button inside Spark. And that has to be set up first. So let's take a look at how that is. Here's Jack's um, Spark here. We're at Jack's PC again. We're going to go over to a web browser here, and I've already logged him in. He's logged into his WebEx account. So when you have Spark and WebEx, you can bring that personal meeting room in and have it or give yourself the ability to do an ad hoc meeting inside Spark, not having to go out and get your PMR URL and things like that. So how do we do this? I'm logged in to, uh, or Jack is logged into his WebEx account. And if we go here to more ways to join, I can get his WebEx PMR URL. That's right there. And I can just copy that. All right, what I would do with that is I'd go over to my Spark, I'd go over to my calendar, and then right down in here, I can edit. If you haven't done this, you won't have anything here. And you can basically edit and put in that URL and then put in my host pin there. Okay? Now, you might be saying to yourself, if you know anything about WebEx and PMR, why am I putting in uh, why am I putting my URL, which would start WebEx, and then my host pin, which was really for when I dial in into the audio or when I dial in via SIP URI. Well, what it does in the background when we start an ad hoc meeting inside Spark, it actually dials the URI. So I'll show you how that works. Let's cancel that. Okay, and let's go to a space. And it doesn't matter. We can be in a one-to-one -one space, a group space. We'll go to this group space. And once I configure that inside my calendar, now I get this button right here. And that button, you see it says My Personal Invite Room. So again, it's very distinct and different from this meetings over here or calling. This is basic meeting stuff. This right here, and this is where the confusion comes in for some folks, is WebEx advanced meeting stuff. So it's just a quick way where I can click on that, and it's going to put my WebEx PMR URL there, and then I can just hit Enter. And that goes right into the message body of this space. And if we can go check, we'll go check Liz, and it looks like she got a message here, and there it is. Okay? So what happens? Let's go over here to Jack, and Jack can either click here to start the meeting. You see, it doesn't cross-launch a, a web browser and bring you into the traditional, you know, this side of things. It cross-launches, or it doesn't cross-launch, it just brings up Spark and is going to dial the URI. If I dial that right there, it's going to take me in, and it's going to take me in, and it automatically throws my host pin in there. So I'm brought in as a host, as you can see right here. Okay? But I have another option. 
right? Let's get out of there. Maybe I did that in this space because I wanted to record it. And today we don't have recording inside um, Spark, so I wanted to record it. I can very well go ahead and go my traditional way. I could put that in for everyone else. And let's say Liz goes in. Let's go over here and, and join Liz. She goes in. She's going in the Cisco meeting rooms way, the, the video centric way, right? And she's there waiting. And then Jack decides, you know, I need to record this meeting. So I'm going to go in, um, really, I'm going to go in this way, start my meeting up here. And that's going to start her, uh, Jack's personal meeting room. And now he has all the functionality control that a traditional WebEx has. So there's the video user. That's going to be Elizabeth there. He's going to come in too. Now, now he doesn't have audio here. He can call using his computer. That's going to bring audio here. And he can share a screen. And then he can start, obviously, he can start recording here as well. So that's how that works. He's got two options there to do that in an ad hoc meeting. And that's how, in my experience, and me, myself, I was a little confused on this Spark PMR button. So again, when you think this button right here, you're thinking this guy right here. And um, also, you're, you're using WebEx, your WebEx personal meeting room, as opposed to this style over here, which you're using the basic meetings of Spark. So hopefully that brings it all together for you. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to show you is the Spark room system. So we're dealing with Exchange, we're dealing with Outlook, and I want to show you how that happens as well. So um, we have a SX10 here, and I'm going to show you with Spark Hybrid Calendar, how we schedule meetings to include a room system. And also, do we have the big green join button? Is it easy peasy? Yes, it is. So don't you worry. Don't be intimidated by a big room system. Cisco is going to make it easy for you. So let's check out how you do it. So here is a a, a team space and we're already familiar with this I'm gonna go create a meeting I'm gonna create the meeting from here that's gonna cross launch my invite and there it is let me bring that up and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna head right over here to the right and I'm going to click on room systems and I'm gonna add that room system right there so let me add that I'm gonna say okay um, do I want to update the location? I do not. Okay, so I see it's Anson, Jessica Kasdan, and this room system. I'm going to send that off. I'm going to say okay. Everything's great and hunky-dory. I'm going to see that in my calendar in a minute. What time is it today? It's late, so we got to go way over here. And there it is buying and selling and uh, mm, let me let me pull that back a little bit we want it starting pretty quick here send up an update all right okay let's let that update and I'm gonna take you over to the SX so what do you know? There's our big green button on our SX-10. You can see there's the SX-10 right up there. And here's the kiosk for the SX-10. And I didn't do anything. I just uh, scheduled that meeting just like you saw in uh, Spark. Uh, that scheduled it in Outlook and I added the room. There's my green button there and I can just push join. And we can see up here that we're joining the meeting. Easy peasy.